Hey guys, Woodruff here. So um, we're going to, to today work on breaking down heart blocks. Um, and so this can be a really confusing topic. I have other videos on this, but this is more of a short, just telling you it's a two-step process um, to figure out what kind of block you are. Now, in order for this two-step process to work, um, first off, you have to know that the strip you're looking at is a block. Like, so if you're pretty sure it's a block, it has to start with that. Because if you're looking like this is not like this is not a method that works if you're just looking at any possible rhythm. Um, but this works if you are if you know on your test it's a heart block, it's some sort of heart block. If you're tested over just blocks, um, or if you can recognize it's some sort of block, and now you just need to figure out what type of block. This is the video for you. Um, there, if you want to learn just in general how to identify heart rhythms, there's a lot other better methods and stuff like that. But this is just for if you know it's a heart block, but you're trying to figure out what type of heart block, um, uh, what degree and what type of heart block, and then um, this is the video for you. So step one to figure out what kind of block it is. So the first question you need to ask yourself um, is, is it regular or irregular? Um, so if you know that you're looking at a block, here's two different block strips. Um, you wanna look at, is it regular? So if you don't know what that means, effectively it's asking, is this there the same space between the pointy things or the QRS? Is, is it regular? So this first strip over here on the left is regular. Um, or is it irregular? Look at the second strip. See how there's different spaces in between the QRSs or the pointy things? Um, there's different spaces. So the general rule is, let me go to the next slide, um, that if it's regular, like if it has the same space between the pointy things, the QRSs, then it is a first or a third degree block. So here, um, what do you call it? You can see here uh, at the bottom uh, here, there's the same space between the QRSs. And then here at the top, even though there's only three of these QRSs, there's the same space between them. Um, and if you did measure out these P waves here, you would see there's the same distance between them. So the big thing, but it doesn't matter what's going on with the P wave. So don't get too hung up on that. Um, uh, what do you call it? To decide if it's regular or not. Remember, if I say, is it regular, um, I'm talking about the distance between the pointy things or the QRSs. If it's regular, there's the same amount of space between those. It has to be either a first or a third degree block. So step one, is it regular, irregular? Step two um, is going to be looking at now differentiating. Okay, I know it has to be a first or a third degree block, but how do I differentiate between those two? So step two of if it's regular, it's going to be is if there is a QRS directly after every P wave. If the answer is yes, you have a first degree block. If the answer is no, you have a third degree block. So let's look at this. So here at this one, you see here's some P waves, but there's no P wave. Uh, sorry, there's no QRS directly after these P waves. So I just see P wave, nothing. P wave, QRS. P wave, nothing. P wave, nothing. P wave, QRS. Uh, but there's no, um, there's not a QRS for every P wave directly after where you look at this one, look, P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS. So it's very much more regular. Um, so this top one is going to be a third degree block where this bottom one is going to be a first degree block. So if it's regular and then has P waves um, that are followed directly by a QRS, it is a first degree block. If you have um, a regular Q, uh, R to R or distance between your QRSs, but they, you have P waves that don't have QRSs after, directly after them, then you have a third degree block. So hopefully that breaks that down. Some other things, let's say that you're like, oh, like I like more. You know, if you do want to add more and not keep it simple, um, some other things you can look at to kind of verify that you are actually looking at what um, you think you're looking at is with a first degree block like this one at the bottom, the blue one. Um, it has a regular rate. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is like a rate of 80. Um, everything is normal. There's a P wave, a QRS, a T wave. Everything is upright. Um, everything is how it's supposed to be. The only thing that's abnormal about this rhythm is see here. And I can actually, oh, no, don't go there. Let's see. I can actually, let me get out my drawing thing, um, is we're looking at the space between, let's see. Here's like the beginning of my P wave. And then here's this. It's a little long. It's supposed to be just this distance. Oh, wow. I'm actually coloring pretty well, considering I usually can't stay within the lines. So let me make it big again. 
So um, normally um, the, the PR interval is just supposed to be the space of one of these boxes, but you see this one, it's a little long. It's greater than one of these boxes. So this is what we would consider to be a first degree block because um, like I said, regular rate, um, everything is normal. There's just a prolonged interval from the P wave to the QRS. So the space between the beginning of the P wave and the beginning of the pointy thing is longer than what it's supposed to be. Whereas with the third degree, another thing that you can look at, again, this is only if you want to make it more complicated or if you're just one of those people that doesn't trust yourself and you want to look at some other things to verify. Other characteristics of a third degree block is that it's a slow rate. Look at this rate up here. It's 30. One, two, three, three QRSs. That's a rate of 30. Um, look at this QRS too. It's wide. So a wide QRS. And then if you'll notice, there's some P waves buried. See, look, look, these are normal QRSs. Then look at this. What is this? This is a P wave buried in the QRS. You can also see this P wave and buried in this T wave. There's a P wave right here where the T wave is supposed to be. So the P waves are doing whatever they want to do. The QRSs um, are fat. It's slow rate. Um, and um, uh, they're doing their own thing too. That's a third degree block. So Hopefully that, that keeps it simple with that. Now let's talk about what if it's irregular? So step one, is it regular or irregular? So we figured out if it's regular, it has to be a first or a third degree block. But what if it's irregular? If it's irregular, then we have to have a second degree block. This would be simple, except there is two types of second degree, but ah, sorry, second degree blocks. <laughs> and so um, when we, when, if it's irregular or if the space between the QRSs is, is different. So like see here between the QRSs, there's different amounts of space. If it's irregular, we have to have a second degree block, but now we need to figure out what type of second degree block. Um, so we want to see, um, so the question we want to ask ourselves after we recognize, okay, this is irregular, then we need to ask ourselves, does the PR interval, remember the PR interval is where the beginning of the P wave to the pointy thing, um, does it stay the same or does it get longer? So if it gets longer, it's a second degree type one, but if it stays the same, it's a second degree type two. So let's look at this. So you see this one here and we can actually... I will um, do this too, where I use my little uh, marker here. So you could see with this one, uh, oh, actually, let's start with this one. This one is about the distance. It's about, about the, it's about the space of, you know, one box. If you look at this one, look, it's getting, is it getting longer? Mm -hmm. And you probably can see this one. This one's pretty obvious, um, but um, you can see how this space between is getting longer longer and then this is what we call drop when you hear the longer 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 drop or sorry sorry longer longer drop now we got a winky box this is what we're talking about is that look at this space it's getting long this pr interval is prolonging and then you have a drop beat now let's compare it to this one look at this one this one had uh, oh let's see i knew it was eventually going to happen let me undo that one all right so um we start here if you'll notice one thing it's normal um, we have a drop beat here, then we have another one, and this one is same amount of space. If you look at this, there's nothing getting longer. These are staying the same the whole time. And one other thing you'll notice is, is that the PR interval is actually normal. So look at these. These are staying the same all the time. They're not getting longer. They're all staying the same. And then you just have these random dropped beats. So this is a, the top one is a second degree type one. And the bottom one is a second degree type two. Um, other things, again, if you want to make things more complicated, because it's all about, does, is the PR interval getting longer or is it not? So if you have an irregular R to R and you know it's a block, um, so the, what you need to look at then is, is just what's going on with my PR interval. Is it staying the same or is it getting longer? But if you want to look at other things, usually a second degree type one like this has more of a pattern for to it. So like usually it's very predictable, It'll be longer, longer, drop longer, longer drop, or it might be longer, longer, longer drop, longer, longer, longer drop. But it's almost like um, it's musical almost in a way where it's very methodical and patterned. Um, whereas a second degree type two is, is this is, um, uh, this one actually has a normal PR interval. So it's almost tricky. It's like, hey, look, I'm normal. There's no block here, but then boom, random drop beat. So this first one is a little less scary because I can predict 
when they're about to drop a um, heartbeat or not have a QRS after their pee. But for the second degree type two, it's just randomly happening. Um, so it's like, hey, everything's normal. Everything's normal here. Drop beat. Like I, I can't expect that. It's not patterned. And so um, it's definitely more serious and we're getting towards that third degree block before we know it. So anyway, hope this makes sense for this. Let's do some practice. Um, so let's look at all of these. So first, remember, step one, is it regular or irregular? So I'm going to look at my distance here. And for this one, it looks like it's regular. So if it's regular, I either have a first or a third degree block. Um, and so next thing I need to do is then ask myself, um, is there a QRS after um, directly after each P wave? So P wave QRS. P wave, oh, no, there's no QRS here. P wave, QRS, P wave, nothing. P wave, nothing. P wave, QRS. So if there is um, no QRSs after some of these beats, this has to be a third degree block. So it is a third degree block because there is some P waves that do not have QRSs. The other thing that can tell me is, remember, there's a whole bunch of P waves here. They're buried some in, the, in this um, QRS. And also I have a slow rate, a rate of 30, and I have a wide QRS. So those are my other cues that it's a third degree block. So let's go to this next one. So with this one, it is, let's see, is it regular or irregular? There's varied space. So I have an irregular rhythm. So I have to have some sort of uh, second degree block. So is it a type one or a type two though? So now I need to go and look at my um, space between my P, uh, my space or my distance for my PR interval. Is it staying the same or is it changing? So if I want to do that, because I think the ruler helps with this. Um, or not the ruler, the marker helps with this. So I have this, then I have this, and then I have a drop beat. So then I have this, and then I have this. So I have to ask myself, is it getting bigger? And it looks like it's getting bigger um, and then dropping. Longer, longer, drop. Longer, or sh I should say shorter, but longer. Uh, and this should be longer, and then there'll probably be another drop beat. So um, this is getting longer and then um, dropping and dropping a beat. So um, because of that, um, I have a, a second degree type one um, because it's longer, longer drop. Now I have a winky box. So that's a second degree type one. Um, let's look at this one. Is it regular or irregular? Let's look. Well, it looks like there's the same distance between um, all of my QRSs. So it has to be some sort of um, either a first degree or a third degree block. Then I need to see, is there a QRS directly after each P wave? So P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS. So you could see there is a P wave after every, Q, uh, there's a QRS after every P wave. So it has to be um, a first degree because if it, uh, it would be a third degree if there was P waves without QRSs after them. But there is a QRS after every P wave. And just to verify, it's a normal rate. Everything is normal in this rhythm, except for the fact that my PR interval is long. It's greater than one of these boxes. Um, last but not least, let's see, regular or irregular? This one is irregular. Um, so then what I do is I look at my PR interval. Is it staying the same or is it changing? Let's look at this. So it, this actually looks like a pretty normal PR interval, but then I have a drop beat, pretty normal PR interval. Um, pretty normal PR interval, pretty, uh, oh, nope, drop beat, pretty normal PR interval. Pretty normal PR interval, drop beat. So this is again kind of like that random, um, you know, unpredictable um, uh, nature of a second degree type two. So if it was longer, longer drop, we would have a type one. But because it has a normal PR interval, um, but just random drop beats and the PR interval is staying the same, it's not changing. Every P wave that has a QRS attached, it has the same distance. There's no prolongation. It's just same PR, same PR drop beat, same PR drop beat. You know, it's it's very um, it's it's very methodical like that when it comes to the distance between that P wave and that QRS. So as a whole, this is a second degree type two. So. Um, hopefully this broke this down to make it more manageable for you and help you to understand blocks a little bit better. Um, I will uh, hopefully uh, hear about your wonderful success on your cardiac exam soon. So I'll see you guys for the next one.